there is not a single person who I speak with. It could be um, new family members. I, I remarried 10 years ago, and this conversation took place with them. It could be uh, uh, new faculty members who are on my campus and they ask me about my research. It could be people I meet on an airplane and presumably will never see again. And they, they ask what kind of things I, I do as, a, as a, a faculty member. And when I get around to telling them that I have done research on the radical, quote unquote, radical environmental movement to a person, they look at me and say, oh, you mean the eco-terrorists. So let me use that as a springboard to the first of these four points that I want to make. I, and, I, and I called this, I labeled what I had in mind this evening and, and the argument that I want to make a, a, a practical argument. I, I, I will have nothing to say if, if, if you want to take the conversation in the direction of philosophy or even theory. And I, I, I teach social theory, including a little bit of anarchist theory. I, I really don't want to go there. I want, I want to talk about real world, on the ground, problems, realities, and, and so forth. Here, that's, that's my preference. Anyway. So point number one, uh, I'll call labeling. Radical environmentalism, resistance environmentalism, ecological resistors have been labeled successfully as terrorists. And there is no lower form of life to most people in the United States today than a terrorist. So the, the, the federal government has been amazingly successful in, in this effort. It was aided and, aided and abetted by things that started happening in the, in the 80s and 90s. When, with the emergence of the radical environmental movement, uh, we, we found that conservative politicians inevitably put the word radical in front of environmentalists, no matter who they were talking about. So the, the radicals at the Sierra Club, right? You know, so you, you would literally hear that kind of verbiage, right? And, and we still do today, except they don't even bother talking about environmentalists in, in the current uh, situation. But uh, so, so, so that, that, that reality um, laid the groundwork for the labeling starting uh, uh, at least as far back as, as 2002, early in, in that year, uh, when the FBI went before Congress and labeled radical environmentalists as the, the nation's number one domestic terror threat. So we've, we've got that phenomenon occurring at least that far back. So I think that label is a dangerous thing. Uh, it, labels are sticky. They don't go away easily. And so this movement, uh, regardless of whether one is completely committed to civil disobedience or completely committed to property destruction, this movement has, has successfully been labeled uh, uh, eco-terrorism. And, and that's very much in people's minds. So that's, that's point number one. Uh, in terms of point number one, labeling, right? Um, the idea being that if we commit destructive acts as part of our movement that we're going to be labeled terrorists in this case, right? But, um, but in the past it's been reds or uh, savages. Um, there's, always some kind of, there's always some kind of boogeyman name for whoever it is that the enemy is. And in this case, terrorism has been so undefined, like the definition of terrorism has been whittled down in recent years to, to be very malleable to whoever it is that you're against. And, uh, and it is true that, uh, that I'm labeled, and a lot of people that, you know, that I've worked with are labeled eco-terrorist or some kind of terrorist or another. Um, and I don't like it. Um, I'm not really sure that anybody likes it. And maybe out of all the people I know, I like it the most. <laughs> because um, because it's kind of like it's hilarious like when, when I first moved back to Buffalo there was some kind of like stencil graffiti on the ground um, and it said eco-terrorist with a question mark and there was this, all of these other terms too but there was one that said eco-terrorist and I used to just laugh every time I passed by it because it's like what is that you know it's like eco-terrorist kind of like softens up the terrorist thing it's just weird and funny but um, 
regardless, the point is that the labeling the labeling happens, and uh, and I guess what I have to say to that is that labeling happens uh, to the most radical in the room at every at any given point throughout American history, um, and you know if people were to back down from taking action that they believe is the right thing to do because of an issue like labeling, that would be a shame. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people in American history who, um, well, there's a lot of people in American history and world history who were labeled nasty things when they were out doing nasty things, right? And, um, and some of them have been vindicated throughout history. The Underground Railroad, Harry Tubman, or, you know, they're talking about putting Tubman on one of the bills. I think the ten dollar bill or something like that. Now, so um, you know, it, Malcolm X eventually got on a stamp. Uh, it was controversial when I was when I was young. He got put on a postage stamp, but um, you know, Malcolm was vilified. Tubman, you know, there was a there was a death, there was, you know, a warrant out for her arrest and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's always gonna be labeling. Labeling isn't something we can avoid. It's going to be the most radical person in the room and whether that person is committing actual acts of violence or property destruction, acts of property destruction, or if the movement is at a point where all you're doing is uh, signing petitions, it's going to be the people with the most radical words on those petitions that get called terrorists or whatever. Um, if we were to succumb to what our enemies call us, and, and shape our strategies based on what our enemies identify us as, then we are defeated from the get-go. It's always a bad word. There's derogatory terms that were used for different groups of people throughout history, for different countries that this country was up against in war. They had terms for pretty much every enemy that there was ever. And so in a sense, it's a, it's a little bit of a badge of honor in a weird, ironic way to be that there is this thing called eco-terrorism and it is this big focus of the of the this of the FBI, which is an evil organization and a hor horrible history. Um, and they found what we're doing significant enough to um, to prioritize us, which comes with a lot of really bad baggage. But on on one hand, while the Earth Liberation Front was very active, and while I was doing press work for them, um, in a weird ironic way, it was reassuring because I know that all the social justice movements that I've allied myself throughout history have been targets and number one priorities of the FBI. And to have that happen with the, with the ELF was, we must be doing something kind of right. Um, obviously the journalists weren't in favor of us, uh, the politicians weren't in favor of the movement, and that word never went away and is probably never really gonna go away. But again, I would never suggest Basing strategy on something like what nasty terms they're going to be calling us if we do things they don't like. Now, and generally, they call us nasty terms because we're making an impact. Um, so that's a, a thought I had on. So the, the sacred one. ideology of private property. Uh, yeah, and one one other quick thing. Um, it's key to note that this movement, and 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 I feel safe saying that every radical movement. Um, it doesn't have the same priorities as the less, as the more moderate movements, right? And so, looking really good, and uh, and getting positive news coverage, and getting every middle American to understand what you're doing isn't the main priority of the Earth Liberation Front. They realized that they would sacrifice some popularity um, and and mainstream public appeal in order to do this extreme thing. Same thing with groups like the Black Panther Party, um, and and several other throughout throughout American history, you know, you build a strategy and you choose one thing or another and when you're part of the radical wing of a movement, being the most popular kid in school isn't your number one priority. So you realize you can be called nasty names and you accept that reality because you believe what you're doing.